Well, apparently yours truly is unable to upload any kind of video content on here that lasts longer than 20 minutes. <laughs> Made the discovery over a four day period of time as I was attempting to upload my latest content prior to this, which was my breakdown of Super Wildcard Weekend, as well as my predictions and synopsis of all the upcoming games in the divisional round. Uh, the video lasted about 21 minutes and some change long. Uh, and I did it at four different locations, uh, that being attempting to upload it. And it would get to about the 59% mark, and then I'd get an error message that said failure to upload. And all the places I want had very high um, high speed connectivity. So I'm confused what the hell happened. Maybe you have to have so much content up here before it allows you to go past a certain mark. I, I really don't know. But it wouldn't allow me to upload it no matter how much I tried, how many times I tried, where I went. And as mentioned, it wasn't the net because I did it multiple places. Every place I go, it had very good connectivity. I've uploaded content there before, so must be a YouTube thing, which is cool. Not going to cry over spilled milk. Uh, what I will tell you is my predictions. I want 500 on the weekend. Pick Cincinnati to beat Tennessee. Um, and my breakdown on that game was I thought the Titans would certainly run the football, uh, put up a couple of touchdowns there, especially with Derrick Henry coming back. But I thought Cincinnati had a big advantage in the passing game. I mean, I thought Joe Burrow, world's better passer than Ryan Tannehill. Uh, and I thought that the receiving core, while I think A.J. Brown is very, very good, I think that the Bengals have three A.J. Browns. And I just didn't think Tennessee could keep up. They didn't. I also picked Buffalo to beat Kansas City. Uh, the, the game, other than the who won pretty much went down exactly as I expected it to. It was a high scoring affair, a lot of scoring. And, uh, but I thought Buffalo at the end would lock down. I thought they would come up with a couple of late defensive stands and pick up the win. That unfortunately didn't happen. We'll break that down again here a couple in a couple of moments. In the NFC, I picked the, uh, I picked the Packers to beat the 49ers. Even though I said, I thought the 49ers were a sneaky team that I could certainly see sneaking out a couple of wins. Um, and even though that the 49ers were 3-0 and heading into the game against Aaron Rodgers in the playoffs, I, uh, I went with my gut there, and I, or not even my gut, I went with my head. I thought, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. <laughs> I couldn't see Aaron Rodgers losing to the 49ers four times, especially with how the Packers were playing. They look like the most complete team in the playoffs, um, you know, especially now that Rodgers and the coaching staff and the front office all seemed on the same page. I didn't think he, you know, could potentially end like this, but it did. Next time, I just should, should just go with my hunch that the 49ers are a dangerous team. But, you know, I'll just listen to my hunch next time. And I, I did pick the Rams to beat the Buccaneers. I said that the Rams were a horrible matchup for Tampa. Um, you know, the Rams have a lot of tools in the shed. They have a lot of offensive weapons. Beckham looks like the new, Beckham of New York ever since he got out of the grips of uh, Cleveland and, and Baker Mayfield. And, you know, they've got an actual quarterback there now, not Jared Goff bogging them down. Cooper Cup, I can't sing enough raves about him. I'm going to continue to do so in this video. And that defense has more than enough to shut Tom Brady down, especially that there are quite a few weapons down. And that's pretty much what happened, although Brady, Brady do, does what Brady does, man. He made that hellaciously close late, and uh, the Rams wound up picking up a win in the end. So championship weekend is set. <clears throat> Some interesting potential Super Bowl matchups. You have the chance of either only the second ever trilogy in Super Bowl history. Of course, the Steelers and Cowboys, that's been a trilogy. You could wind up getting Cincinnati, San Francisco 3, although this time it would be the Bengals who have the highly talked about former national championship winning quarterback named Joe on their roster, not the other way around. You'd get another Super Bowl match, uh, Super Bowl uh, rematch. This time it'd be between the 49ers and the Chiefs, although technically the Bengals and uh, 49ers also would be a rematch, but you get my point of view. Uh, you'd get Sean McVay versus one of his pupils if it's the Rams and the Bengals, or you'd get a very, very intriguing matchup between the Rams and the Chiefs, which, by the way, Missouri's current team versus a team that spent 20 years there. So... A lot of interesting matchups there potentially happening in the Super Bowl. But real quick, I'm not going to spend 20 minutes because I know what's going to happen if I try to upload it. So let's go ahead and do a quick, brief synopsis of the games we saw. Starting first with the game that everybody's talking about, Buffalo, Kansas City. I'm telling you guys, one of the greatest games you will see in playoff action. Definitely one of the greatest two minutes of action 
I've seen in my time as a football fan and certainly my time of covering it. Neither of these teams wanted to lose on offense. Allen got the ball and he refused to stop. Gabriel Davis, talk about a a, 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 a career-defining performance, four touchdowns in the outing. Um, and I know there's a lot of people moaning and bitching and complaining, change the overtime rules, and I don't disagree with that. But I hate to bag on the Bills. I really do here. However, you got to stop a team with 13 seconds left. You cannot give that much ground up with 13 seconds and expect to get much room for error, man. Um, you know, and granted, that kick, it's a, it, think about it, it's a kick that, that screws the Bills. If he'd have kicked the ball and let the, let the you know, the, the return team return it, we might be singing a different tune here. I will tell you this, this is one of the most heartbreaking losses Buffalo suffered. I won't put it up there with wide right. I can't. But it is probably the second most heartbreaking loss this franchise has ever suffered because they should have won it. They scored with 13 seconds left. I'm, I'm ready to cut a video, man. Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, that's going to be a hell of a game. And then they kick the ball. It gets, you know, it goes, you know, they, the Chiefs get the ball at the 20 yard line. I'm thinking to myself, this Bills defense is too damn good. You know, Mahomes is great, but he, he, he can only do so much. Well, don't ever underestimate Patrick Mahomes. But again, a crushing, crushing loss for Buffalo. Regardless of the coin flip, yeah, I know the OT rules suck in the, in the postseason, but man, just crushing, crushing loss. Uh, but Kansas City moves on. Cincinnati, man. Uh, we'll talk about them in a minute, but, you know, Cincinnati continue. They don't win a playoff game in 30 years, 31 years. They win two. And, by the way, last time they went to the Super Bowl, they beat the Houston Oilers, who are now the Tennessee Titans. Just saying. Just saying, guys. Uh, but as for Tennessee, you know, I've got several good friends of mine who are diehard Titan fans, and I have argued with them for several years now. Ryan Tannehill is not that guy. And I'm not saying this is a bitter Dolphins fan. Tannehill reached his peak in Miami. It was time to move on. Tannehill will only lead you so far. He has his limitations. I'm not saying they need to go out and get a franchise-defining quarterback. But look what the Rams are doing with Matthew Stafford. That's the kind of level of quarterback they need. The Titans will not win a Super Bowl with Ryan Tannehill, guys. I'm sorry, and this is concrete proof. They've gone as far as they're going to go with him. They cannot go any further. Look, they got... Julio Jones last offseason and he had the worst season of his freaking career you, you, you've got too talented of a team you've got a great coach you've got a great defense you've got a honest to God you've got a a, a, a generational talent at halfback and you lose in this, you, you got home field advantage and you lose the first game you play no knock on Cincinnati here guys at all that's inexcusable and that's all on Ryan Tannehill you need to move on. Um, is this the end for Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers? That's a lot of talk that's surrounding Green Bay and Tampa Bay. Have we seen the end of an era without these two in the league? It's going to be crazy in the NFL if those two and Ben Roethlisberger walk away. It's going to be a much, much different game without those two there, without those three there. I mean, we all love to hate on Tom Brady, but the game's going to be monumentally different without him on the sidelines. And it's going to be monumentally different without Rodgers and Roethlisberger too. Some think Rodgers might stick around. I don't know. It just seemed to be an, uh, an aura that he might be gone. Um, just crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy stuff there in, in uh, the divisional round. Anyway, let's jump right into the picks for the championship weekend. We'll start with the NFC. You got the battle of the NFC West. Uh, these two teams split the regular season meeting. I'm telling you guys, I said it before. I'll say it again. This San Francisco team, it's not pretty. They don't look flashy out there. If you like high scoring, if you like flash and pomp and circumstances, that is not the San Francisco 49ers. That's not Jimmy Garoppolo. He's never going to put up 4,000 yards, 5,000 yards. He's not going to put up 30 or 40 touchdowns. He's not going to put up a, 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 a you know five-touchdown outing. What he is going to do, though, is he's going to know when to throw the football to Brandon Ayuk. He's going to know when to throw the football to Debo Samuel. He's going to know when to throw the football at the right time to George Kittle. He's going to know when to hand it off to Elijah Mitchell or whoever the hell else is running the football there in San Francisco behind that beast of an offensive line. Uh, he, he's proficient. He knows what to do, and he knows how to do it, and he knows how to win games. And that is the most important statistic of them all. Forget the stats. If you win games, there's nothing more you can ask for from a starting quarterback. 
Again, not flashy, not pretty. This is old school football 101. The defense knocks people around, beats the shit out of teams. The offense does what they need to do. They get in there, they beat the hell out of you, and they get the hell out. They've done it to their last two teams. They've played in the playoffs. They've done it all year. Hell, they've done this under Kyle Shanahan since he took over. Can they do it one more time and get back to the Super Bowl and try to finish the job, finish what they started? They get the Rams, who also are trying to finish the job they started. We all know what happened last time they got to the Super Bowl. It was ugly. It was nasty. It was disgusting. Jared Goff put out one of the worst Super Bowl performances you will ever see from a quarterback. Goff is gone now. Matthew Stafford, just what the doctor ordered for this team. This is a tough one to call. I, I'm really reluctant to pick against San Francisco because, as I said, this team wins ugly. The Rams know that well. I just can't help but think this Los Angeles team has way, way too much in the shed. The defense can, can win a fist fight with San Francisco. They are the one team, I think, that has that in them. The offense, I think, Odell Beckham Jr., that missing link. As I said before, ever since he got to Los Angeles, it's been a career revitalization. Everybody thought he was done. Was he really, though, or was it the fact that Baker Mayfield looks like shit? You be the judge. Who do you stop if you're San Francisco? Do you stop Mayfield? Or do you stop Mayfield? Yeah, Mayfield stops himself. Do you stop Beckham and let Cooper Cup destroy you? Do you stop Cup and let ba do you let Beckham destroy you? Oh, by the way, the running game looks pretty damn good as well. On defense, you're not. This 49er team doesn't light up the scoreboards anyway. They're not doing it against this Ram defense. San Francisco's had a hell of a run. And I said at the beginning, I think they could knock off quite a few teams on their way to the championship game. When I said a few teams, I meant a few. I can't see them getting past the Rams here. It's going to be a dogfight. Make no mistake about it. Nobody's blowing the brakes off of San Francisco. It is going to be a hell of a dogfight from start to finish. But I see the Rams sneaking by in a hell of a close game. I see it being less than a touchdown, but Los Angeles gets back to the Super Bowl as Sean McVay tries to complete his journey and get that first ever Super Bowl win and erase the absolute horse shit stench from when they got there the last time. And that Patriot lost 13 to three from a few years back. Now we move on to the AFC. Who day the Bengals travel to Arrowhead to take on the back to back champs of the conference, the Kansas City Chiefs. I gotta tell you, man, this is closer than people realize. Joe Burrow has this team completely with a different frame of mind. When they won that first playoff game in 31 years, he said, quit celebrating. This ain't the first. Or this ain't the, this may be the first, but it ain't going to be the last. Get used to winning champion playoff games. We're not going to settle for just one. The mindset he has brought to this organization completely has changed it. And this offense, guys, is scary. People forget Joe Mixon can run that rock. Okay? Cincinnati does have a big advantage there. They can pound the football with the best of them. The offensive line is, is not good. If there's one thing the Bengals must do in the offseason, they have to fix that line. It's got better this year, but it still ain't good. That being said, if there is one team right now that they could have faced that's not going to put that much pressure on them, it's Kansas City. They have the horses, but they don't. You know, they, they have a couple of horses, but they're not going to put the kind of pressure that Buffalo would have. I'm not going to lie to you guys and tell you that Gabriel Davis, who put up six touchdowns all year, just torched, you know, just torched the Chiefs for four yesterday. I'm not going to say that Cincinnati has, you know, three receivers that could do the same thing. This is an interesting game. This is interesting. Could the Bengals make this tight? They did beat them in the regular season. Could Joe Burrow put on a clinic? I don't know, guys. I really don't. Oh, this is a coin flip, man. Like I said, if Gabe Davis puts up four touchdowns and he only scored six during the regular season, I could see, I could see Chase Higgins and Boyd kicking their ass. I just got to go with that experience, man. I got to go with the experience factor here. God love you, Cincinnati. This ain't going to be the last time we see you around. 
I just cannot pick against Kansas City in this factor, man. I can't pick Mahomes. I can't pick against Mahomes. I'm going with I'm going with the Chiefs. It's going to be close as hell. It is going to be very close. But Kansas City pulls one out, and I expect fireworks. I expect a recap of what we just saw. But Cincinnati, you guys fought a hell of a fight. 31 years without a playoff win. It's not going to be another 31 before you see you back in this point. Kansas City advances on. So we get the battle of the Rams and the Chiefs in Los Angeles. The Chiefs get to go on the road and be the enemy and home turf on somebody else's home turf for back-to-back -back seasons. Crazy stuff. Tune back in next week. Tell me if I'm nuts. I pray to God this uploads. I pray to God I don't want to piss away another 15 minutes for a video that don't upload. YouTube, don't, don't do me this way. Anyway, until next week, when I come on here and see if I completely shit to bed. Knowing my luck, we'll get a trilogy of Cincinnati and, and uh, San Francisco. But until next week, I'll talk to you guys.